Good morning, and welcome to the Walter Reed National Military Medical Center Bethesda Clinical Pastoral Education Graduation. My name is Sergeant Outlaw, and I will be your master of ceremony for today's graduation. Please rise for the playing of the national anthem and remain standing for the invocation given by the class chaplain, Chaplain Captain Kiskama Lamore. to be with us in this graduation ceremony. You chose us for this and called each one by name to embark on the CPE residency program. Thank you for the many blessings we enjoyed through the year. Thank you for the privileges to learn from patients and our supervisor. Thank you for the challenges along the way. Most of all, Thank you for the knowledge and skills we acquire. Lord, as we hear our names spoken out loud this morning to receive diplomas of accomplishment, may we also hear your voice commissioning each of us to be purposeful in the directions we take, no matter the circumstances we find ourselves in. That with your help, we may be impactful and create outstanding stories by what we do in the places we are assigned and in the lives of the people you put in our path. We ask, O oh Lord, that as we depart, you may endow each and every one of us with a special grace to remain vigilant and conscientious in maintaining the very high standard we have acquired. We make this prayer in your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Chaplain Lamar. At this time, we will have the introduction of the speaker given by Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Ryan. Good morning. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you today, Lieutenant Colonel Toddy L. Sr. As you look over his bio, you can see that Lieutenant Colonel Ingram's military career has been 33 years of outstanding service. He has served both enlisted and officer rank as an infantryman and a nurse. And of course, one of his most distinguished achievements was being a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne. Boom! Boom! Earning his master's degree as a psychiatric clinical nurse specialist and psychiatric nurse practitioner from the University of Maryland, he received, he resonates with our students. Why? Because of the dedication and long suffering it takes to stay the course, to move through adversity and accomplish one's goals. In his current role as Section Chief for Health Professions, 
Education Director for the Psychiatric Behavioral Health Nurse Corps. Lieutenant Colonel Ingram has become a treasured member of my professional advisor, advisory group as he brings plenty of wisdom, experience, and practical knowledge that I can learn from. When asked, the students of this class didn't hesitate to select him to speak their graduation. I believe this is because he has connected with them so well, as he does with everyone. I am so delighted to have him speak to us today and share a small portion of his wisdom with us. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Toddy. <coughs> Yes, a very small part of his wisdom, absolutely. Thank you, thank you, Chaplain. And good morning, everyone. Good morning, graduates. Yeah. It's, yeah. About, it's about that time. Yeah. I want to say good morning, ma'am. Good morning. To everyone here and those that are watching at home, family members, good morning. And thank you for your presence here today. Okay, let's get, let's get this started. Y'all ready? This passage of scripture, which is the my text, is coming from the book of Psalms, 8th chapter. So let's read. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens from the lips of children and infants. You have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have already set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, a little lower than the angels, a little lower than God. And you crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet. All the flocks and herds and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, all that swim, the past of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. 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 So I, I want, you know, this song written by King David. And in verse 4, that's where I want to concentrate today for you. What is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him? That's a fundamental question I think that has profound mankind for thousands of millennia. Amen. The brightest minds, the smartest theologians, philosophers have tried to figure that out. What is man? And so for me, if I was writing, a song. I would be like, what's in it for me? What is it all about? How is it going to end? When did it start? What are we supposed to get out of this existence of mankind? What is it? And then you're mindful of it? This is David, King David, writing a song unto God. And then you care about us. Well, when you look around today, if, we're the, if, if we are crowned with glory and honor, and we were created in God's image, what does it all mean? The suffering, the tragedies, one would be in doubt. Because when you compare yourself to the heavens and the stars, the galaxies, the universe, the vastness of time, the Big Bang, even before that, we are, we see ourselves as a small spectacle on this little planet called Earth. And sometimes that can feel 
insignificant. But in reality, if our creator of mankind has made us that small and crowned us with glory and put everything under our feet, it's a testament. It is a testament of the meaning of why we're here. Amen. The smallest, the least become the greatest. Mm. But we're in troubled times. And man has a search of what that means to him or her. And when I say man, I mean mankind. Created in the image of God. I was very blessed and kind and, and when you asked me to come and speak briefly with you today. And immediately when I got the email, the, that was the first thing that came to my mind. Was talking about mankind. The meaning what does it mean to be here? Because you will be dealing with that every single day. When you walk into that room and as a patient, a client, a customer who had just got diagnosed with cancer, and they're asking you, what does it mean? Will you have the answer? Will you try to create an answer? Will you be quiet? We just have to understand. Well, following level one, pastoral formation, one of the first principles is what? Knowing who you are. Acknowledging what you believe and affirm to it. That's the first thing. Where do I stand in this presence of cancer? In this presence of death and dying? And here's, here's a human who's trying to find meaning in this death. I know it's not fair, but that is what you're responsible for, is to be in there in that moment. And this program has prepared you for that, the tools you need. That's why you're over here camping out, getting that wisdom and sharpening your sword and your dialect and your understanding. Because you're going out into a world now where a man is searching for meaning of everything, their existence, why they're here, how to relate to others. Isolation, plague, war, anarchy. And yet you're in the hospital doing your mission, which is to assist, is to assist man in finding that meaning, the meaningful, the suffering. And that's the pastoral formation. That's, that is the first. So why do we have this suffering? Why do humans suffer? And you know, do you know the answer to that? Many, many, many great philosophers have tried to answer that question. The good news is you don't have to know. Your role, I believe, is to assist in level number two, pastoral competence. It is to assist that individual with discovering meaning. Their meaning, not yours. Their meaning. And how do you do that? How do you develop that competency? Listening empathetically, not judging, being open to learn something new, being vulnerable, taking the risk to open yourself up to something new, something you never heard. And you may go into a room where a person has no belief in God. And that's the good part. Why is that? Because we're not talking about God. We're talking about the spirit of man. Because God throws people off that term. But when you focus on the spirit, which you do, now you gotta now you're in there. And you can listen as someone tries to find meaning to their suffering. Mm -hmm. Because there are some when they're suffering feel rejected and guilt and shame because maybe they didn't have a, a relationship with God. But you're focusing on the spirit, spiritual health and well-being. Their religious ideology is very important. And so you don't have to debate that. But the spiritual being, that's your focus. And you can be there and assist 
that human being is discovering what it means to them. Why is it important? Give me an example. Victor Frankl, in the 1920s and 30s, a psychiatrist, he developed a theory of therapy called logotherapy. It's about putting meaning in, in a situation, understanding, getting out, you know, what does it mean to go through? Being able to, to grow during tragedy and suffering. A couple years later, 1930-35, he was arrested. And because he was Jewish, as you know, during that time, that was the Holocaust. Tragic time of suffering. And he was in four different prisons as an inmate. He saw all kinds of death. Unbelievable. Unimaginable. Horror. How do you get through it? How does a person come out of that with growth? How do they, how do they thrive with, for that? That's what you get to have fun doing. That's what you grow. It's observing that person, find that connection with their meaning. And he was able to do that. He was able to appraise and associate his experience with a meaning that he could connect to. That's where that spiritual health comes in. So when a person gets a diagnosis of, of cancer to them, that may be their internal holocaust that you enter into. But with your training and the skills and the competency, you can do that with, with, with confidence to know that you will be able to assist them. Very important to know. The third is your pastoral reflection, which is self-awareness. Meaning, according to uh, Victor Franklin, comes from experience and tragedy and so forth as you go through that. Because we all will. So in your personal reflection, there are three things that we want to do. We want to take initiative to find out who we are. That's a challenge. But every day, when you when you wake up and you get ready and you put on your armor and you and you base your approach on your theological teaching and education, that is your time. That is your time to get your motivation. That's time for you to move forward. Because that is what you're looking for. That is what you're hoping your client discovers is what motivates them. What's it all about? Where do I fit in in this grand scheme of reality? Remember, some may think I'm just a small step, but you've been crowned with honor and value. Now, that honor and value for that individual may be in terms of words or experiences that you've never heard before. And your role is to coach them there with authenticity, being who, true to who you are, but being open to that gift and that skill you've learned and perfect it, that you will perfect, of empathetic listening. Listen to that narrative story. Look for those themes as your client, as your patient, as your family, as your community cries out for meaning. It's more relevant now, it's as relevant now as it's ever been before. You're all we got for humanity now. The spirit of humanity. Does God care? Is there a higher power? You got to deal with that. So rather than focus on that, the meaning of what we're suffering right now, the social un unrest, what's the meaning of all that? Again, it's not fair, but that's what you've been called to help and assist this society and this government. And you're ready for it. You open yourself up to it. You have self-awareness. You've acknowledged what you believe. You have your principles and your education, ethics, that you will perform your duties by. And you'll be held accountable because you're going to seek counsel when you're at supervision. You're going to seek it. You're not going to wait. You're going to ask, hey, how am I doing? How are you doing, brother? How are you doing, sister? I mean, how am I doing? Here's what I've been doing for the last year. Get that feedback. Seek it. Because that's part of your pastoral self-reflection. And then feedback. Don't be afraid to give that. Give it timely. Don't wait. 
You see your brother, your sister moving left or right? Don't wait. Go to him. Hey, I see something. I love you. Can I help? And last but not least, receive it yourself. And continue to train, educate, never stop learning. But you're getting, you're ready for it. You're ready to help this world, starting with us, find the meaning in this suffering and tragedy. And that is how we heal and move forward. And you're ready to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Eagle. At this time, Chaplain Major Patrick Ireland and Chaplain Captain Travis Wilson will present a small token of appreciation for your time and support to the program and also Chaplain Martin. Sir, on behalf of our class, we want to present you this as a gift and token of our appreciation. Thank you so much for a year long of mentorship and pouring into us. God bless you. Chuck Runner, he and it's been a great pleasure. And on behalf of the CPE class of 2020, we love you and we appreciate all of the hard work long hours that you've placed into polishing us, making us what we are today, better chaplains. As this plaque says, and Alvin Owens, Chaplain Owens, put the hard work of making this, you'll notice on the bottom it's all rough, symbolic of who each of us were. When we came into the program, a little bit rough. <laughs> but, praise God, you helped smooth us out, and you'll feel that it's smooth. So it says, from rough cut to a polished piece, through honesty with self and vulnerability with each other, strong and courageous. So, sir, we thank you. <laughs> Call them uh, flags and from the football from the football idea when, when there's a foul or a challenge, and so when people were not being honest or open or authentic, mm. and we suspect that we, we, we threw the flag, and so now I have a nice. Chaplain Captain Jesus Martinez, S1 personnel. Chaplain Martinez will also be receiving an ACFT Excellence Award. Chaplain Captain Alvin Owens, S4 and S6, Logistics and Communications. Chaplain Owens will also be receiving a Certificate of Achievement as the Honor Graduate. Chaplain Captain Philip Ta, S2 Intelligence. Chaplain Ta will also be receiving a Certificate of Achievement as a Distinguished Honor Graduate. Mm -hmm. 
Chaplain Captain Travis Wilson, S3 Operation. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in a round of applause for the graduating class. challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic and all that is imposed upon your learning experience. And you've excelled in ways that I've never imagined, despite having navigated this unfortunate part of your journey. And I'm very proud of you for that. Finally, I'm super proud of what you've achieved today and the way you've gone about achieving. I'm certain that you will make a difference in the organization that are blessed to have you. I have high expectations of you. And I want you to apply everything you've learned here. It has truly been an honor and an amazing journey. I wish you much success. And I know that, and just know that I am always a phone call or email away. Well. May you be strong and courageous as you go forth and do great things in ministry. Thank you. Thank 
that you have learned have opened up a world to you that perhaps was a little bit cloudy before. You're going to know more. You're going to see more. And you're going to experience more. So the words from Colonel Ingram, Colonel Raheem, you really need to take to heart. Reach out to others. Be supervised by others be able to be reeled in. We've had a lot of collegiality here. And we and I speak for the other chaplains that are here, the staff chaplains, who have been your preceptors. They have also learned so much from you. But they, you'll learn because you reach out. You learn because you take initiative. So take those initiatives to continue your learning. Um, and be humble. You will forever approach your fellow chaplains wherever you go with a new pair of glasses and a deep compassion. Mm -hmm. So use your gifts with love and let honesty and gentleness be yours. Mm -hmm. And now I invite you to pray with me. Oh God, our help in ages past. Our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal hope, a thousand ages in thy sight, our life. An evening dawn, short as the watch that ends the night and flies at break of dawn. Eternal God, your initiative has brought each of us here. 
joy. Your love has given us courage, has sparked us to take initiatives ourselves, and placed us on a path that always leads to you. Today, we thank you for these gentle men. We thank you for those who support them, families, friends, instructors, those who surround them with love and laughter, and even silence when they need it, who embrace their growing edges with hope and tenderness, and remind them of you. They came here to Walter Reed to live and learn among us and to share our mission. You have opened them and us up to our vulnerabilities in life. You have also empowered them in their brokenness to be healers and friends to one another. To those working on their right and left, and especially you have brought healing through them as you have been present at the sides of the beds of the men and women and children who have come here for healing. Thank you for bringing each one of them here among us and using them with such abandon in our midst. We need them, oh Lord. We need their energy and their enthusiasm and their humility, and you blessed us with their presence. Oh God, as they go from here to the next place of service, protect them on the road. Give them your eyes to see your going before them, preparing the way. In the challenges that lie ahead, remind them of the tender moments that they have had here. Cause them to reach out for friendship wherever you may place it. And continue this holy land that you have begun in them. Comfort them and strengthen them. And Lord of all, be with each person who is hearing my voice. Shine the light of your countenance on us. Like a tender shoot needs the light of the sun, draw us up from deep within. That the peace that passes all understanding and that dwells within us might shine in the world. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be now our guide, where light shall last, and the eternal hope. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our graduation. Thank you for joining us today, and above all, strong and courageous. Oh, yeah.